Welcome to McGuire's Car Crazy. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or gal, if you love cars, you're a car guy. And this is Car Crazy Central shouting the passion that 30 million of us who are car guys across America and tens of millions more around the world share in common, no matter what kind of cars we love. Join us as we focus on this emotion of being car crazy. Welcome to Car Crazy Central, ground zero for monitoring the major events and personalities of the car hobby around the world. Each week we creatively serve up a full menu of car crazy passion for you to enjoy via our car crazy television and radio shows, as well as on demand through our website, carcrazycentral.com. Our mission is pure and simple, that's right, we want to make you just a little more crazy! This is like playing in a candy store. I mean, you know, Jay Leno made a great point earlier. He said, you go to a Chevy show, there's 357 Chevys. Here, there's like one of everything. It's like Noah's Ark. I mean, this is all about what Art Center's passion is. And, and we've had students here running around wide-eyed looking at these fantastic designs that go back, you know, to the yeah, 30s and yeah. forward to recent. Yep. Behind me, we've got uh, the 53, 54, and 55 alphabets. And basically, by a lot of people in the world, not just me, considered the greatest automotive design exercise in history. And now our host, Barry McGuire. Hi everybody, welcome to another very special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. Coming to you from Pasadena, California, my birthplace, the Rose Bowl, is just off to my right here. We're up in a park-like setting. It is the Art Center College of Design, and most of the car designers around the world, regardless of the car baker, trace their roots back here. This is where they receive their formal training, so a very special place. This is a bit like homecoming today. It is an annual concourse they put on. Not a lot of cars, but every car is selected because of its historical significance and the role it played in automotive design throughout the year. So it's an amazing field. The Chuck Jordans, all the great designers from the past and current designers are here. Wonderful cars. We come here every year. We just love this event. This year we thought we'd bring our cameras with us so you can enjoy it. So come with me and let's enjoy it together. All right, come on. Stuck and I am car crazy. We're here with Stuart Reed, who's the head of transportation design at the Art Center in Pasadena. What a magnificent event this is. This is a big day for us. I mean, this is all about what Art Center's passion is, and, and we've had students here running around wide-eyed looking at these fantastic designs that go back, you know, to the yeah, 30s and yeah. forward to recent. Yeah, I mean, you brought the whole world of automotive design to the doorstep of your students. I mean, yeah. what can be better than that? Yeah, yeah, and, and all the students are involved. You know, we, we, we're putting some cars together that kind of showcase what's happening. As, as you advance art and technology. So you, you see yeah. generations of cars and the students are able to see what's happened, how we've been able to harvest new technology and make something wonderful. All the designers all over the world, they all come home this one time to be together and share stories yeah, and we enjoy friendships. Had, and we have a lot of alumni right here in Southern California, yeah. of course, with 20 or so advanced right. design studios here. Right. It's an amazing place. This Thank is you. This amazing place. Yeah, we are so excited. Uh, you know, we, we have three projects going this summer. One, which is, you know, the, the Mullen Bugatti thing that we're doing yeah, with our right, students. Right. We have a project with Indy Racing League going on, which is in one of the studios. I think you've seen that. And another one that's our transportation design students working with the architecture students at USC. Uh, urban challenges between urban design and transportation design for the city and of those Shenzhen. those challenges are immense. I've sat through some of your seminars on that, and we're... Transportation has to take us. Yes, we can't in any way sacrifice the kind of passion that we look back to Strother McMahon or someone like that for bringing here. Yeah. But we yeah. have to add to it these days some real responsibility for the challenges that lie ahead. What for you're designers. doing here today literally is going to affect what we're seeing in translation 20, 30 years out. We're seeing it right now. Absolutely, as evidenced as by mind. so many of our alumni. Really? Sure. So. So glad you're where Thank you, you are. You did a great Thank job. I know you love your job. Thanks, Barry. It's Working a good job. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks, dude. One of the great car guy venues in the world is the Nethercutt Collection in Silmar, California. Jack Nethercutt, it's his place, your dad before you, JB, what a great car guy, assembled these cars, and it's overload. I mean, it's one spectacular car after the next. You can spend hours and hours and hours there and never see the same thing twice. Amazing, and free to the public. Absolutely free. To have this kind of place as a, as a total legacy and a gift to the hobby is just absolutely amazing, Jack. Like my dad said, it's functional fine art. Yeah. You know, you're doing more than just keeping the doors open. I mean, you're really bringing added value. You're, you're bringing your own personality into it and doing well, some yes. really nice things. Uh, for instance, what the main car we're restoring right now, or finishing up, actually, 
uh, is a 1913 Chalmers that we're taking to Pebble Beach this year. They didn't make very many of them, that's for sure. And we've had to build or machine quite a few of the uh, parts. Of course, your shop is world-renowned and has so impacted the whole car hobby for absolute correct restoration. And oh. as a result, how many how many wins at Pebble Beach? Six. Six wins, best of show wins. And, Six uh, best of show. We Basically, every car we've taken there except for two, we have one class. Right. Right, uh, right. Two cars we did not win. We took second in So class. we might watch for Chalmers, Chalmers? 1913 Chalmers. Uh, like we hope to take best in class, class. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That'd be great. Jack, uh, we uh, so appreciate you carrying on the legacy. Really one of the great, some people would say the greatest venue there is in the world for car guys. Certainly one of the best. Or hats off to you. At least the most interesting anyway. <laughs> it certainly is. Really. Back with a lot more for the Concord in Pasadena. It is the Art Center Concord. What a fabulous event. Back right after this break. Welcome back to the Art Center College of Design Concord, Pasadena, California, my hometown. I was born here, so this is really special to my heart. Dave Coons, the car guy, the guy that's on TV for us, he's Mr. Channel 7, ABC, car guy, all the car guy stuff, and you're the highest profile car guy in the, in the Southern California area, and you do it so well. Well, you know, this is like playing in a candy store. I mean, you know, Jay Leno made a great point earlier. He said, you go to a Chevy show, there's 357 Chevys. Here, there's like one of everything. It's like Noah's Ark. It's really, yeah. Isn't it something? The car Cars here are spectacular, and you know, not only the cars, the car people. I mean, you talk about celebrities in the car world, a lot of the designers who are really at the top of their field came from Art yeah. Center. They yeah. come back here, they hang out, they this is judge like the homecoming cars. homecoming for the great car designers of the world. Absolutely. I mean, really Everybody from Chuck Jordan to the younger guys, like Harold Belker, I mean, they're yeah. all here just sort of hanging out and admiring the cars. That's amazing. Yeah. And as you say, there's no two alike. I mean, every car here is here for a reason because it is historically significant in the, in the field of automotive design. And cars that you never thought you'd even see in person. And I've seen veteran car people saying, wow, I never thought I'd ever see that <laughs> car. And I finally got to see it. They all come right here to Pasadena. Again, back to you. To your day job at ABC. I mean, you've been on there for a lot of years now. Well, I do that. I do mostly new cars, you know, what people want to buy because yeah, we're on a news broadcast. So it's a, But this is the play stuff. This is the fun stuff. But it's also, you know, it's not just the expensive new cars. I was one of the first people to drive the smart car and I got to drive that around Pasadena and talk about a car getting looks and that's $12,000. It's, uh, I think it's the good old days all over again, isn't it, it? It really is. It really is. Good job today. You worked the microphone and entertained everybody and interviews and all. Yeah, they let me run around and talk to some of the car owners and find out maybe a little tidbit about the car that won't fit on the Sign, so it, it's a lot of fun That's to do. Great. Uh, Dave has a way of finding his way into the microphone role in a lot of car shows around Southern California and beyond. Now. You're no stranger to the microphone either. <laughs> I'm just taking a cue from you. So we have a lot of fun together. We do, Dave. Always good. Thanks so much, always Barry. Good. Great to up, see man. you. All right. Thank you. Caught up with a couple of my good buddies, Lenny Chavis and McKeel Haggerty. McKeel, of course, the owner of Haggerty Insurance. It happens to insure my cars. And uh, <laughs> well, look at after me. Here. Lenny, my good buddy here. When we go back to the beginning of Car Crazy, Lenny was my go-to guy. WATV, you see his work all over the place in all kinds of channels. And I want you to see Lenny to remember uh, the roots of Car Crazy and all of We shot a lot of episodes together. Thank you. Yes, we did. I think a lot of 70 or 80, Something I think we like did. That. Yeah. So I uh, really had a lot of fun. Talk about this show specifically. What do you think of the importance of the show? Well, this, this show's always been kind of a sleeper show in that it's it's local in one sense, but some of the, both the combination of designers and some of the great cars, it's as good as anything you'll see anywhere, yeah. so it's a lot yeah. of fun. Letty, you go to a lot of events, we're at a lot of them together, but uh, this one's really special. Well, it's special because it's uh, put on by people that love style, and I think mm -hmm. all of us that really love classic cars look at them for the style and the grace and the what they stir within us. And I think this is put on by people that know yeah. what, which cars bring that out on us, and that's why it's really a good show. Every car is special. There's no duds around. <laughs> well, and there's some, you, you still come up and say, well, what in the world is that? So there's some really special, interesting something? ones. I mean, we've, so. been, we've all been around for a while, but we still get, every once in a while, what is that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, it just uh, goes on yeah, and on. Uh, and I think that's what this show's all about, and loving cars. Yeah, it really is. Lenny Shavis, everybody, the owner of WATV, catches work on all kinds of networks, speed included, of course. Mikhail Haggerty, Haggerty Insurance, keep up the good stuff, man. Thanks. Keep Thanks us safe. Us. <laughs> all right, see you guys. I think the most famous Delahaye in the world has to belong to my buddy Jim Hall. This car has traveled the miles. 
Hi, Barry. It's good to see you here. Hey, it has. It has. 28 years as of right now, I've had this car and uh, taken it all over the world. You have. And just brought it back again. And you drive this car. Well, this Delahaye <laughs> is an old lady, but she drives like a young girl, you she know. Does. She She has 160 horsepower. And, you know, the, the description of this body, of which there's only four that we know of, done by Henri Chaperon in Paris, was Vedette. That was the name he put on it. Well, Vedette means star, but not star in the sky, movie star, celebrity star is what it meant. And so, you know, I have fun uh, being with my star when I'm driving her. <laughs> Remind me now, is it the World's Fair? It was on the display at the Paris Auto That's Salon in 1947. And that clear plastic steering wheel, of which there's only a handful that I've ever seen, and at least two cars in the 47 Paris Salon yeah. had those clear wheels yeah, Sometimes on them. people think that's an addition, but that's the real deal. That was original. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was done yeah. when the um, car was new. Yeah. The French really had a, a feeling of uh, design and... Uh, swoopy lines and of course they they were the first to really do that Amazing. well thanks jim for all you do You're thank you buddy. all right back with more of our car crazy friends right after this break Luigi Colani, the most honored guest. Lots of famous people here, but Luigi, to be with you today. This is the guru for industrial design, bio design, the, you're a futurist, the impact you're having on art the world over. You're like a professor at like seven different universities. He's a car guy personified. I'm as like, car crazy as you. <laughs> <laughs> this may be your first introduction to Luigi Colati, but this man is for real. It is hard as for doing real. It. <laughs> and you got like $50 million worth of cards yourself. You love cars. I love but cars. But aero design, you're just so far ahead of, I mean, on the world scene, Luigi, I mean, we read about you all the time. You're all over the internet and the presentation <laughs> seminars. We have you here. I get to interview you for a minute, man. <laughs> This is Fantastic. great. I have you here too. <laughs> Pierce Arrow, you just, you really did. You just bought the name. Pierce Arrow, you know. Pierce the Arrow owner? by Colani will be on the market with 10 prototypes within two years, <laughs> and they will be sold for an, an enormous amount of money, killing everything on the market. <laughs> and this is an American car. I give it to you. And we will build it with a coach builder over here. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Isn't it great? Word has it that you have a Corvette right now that goes pretty fast. 300 miles. 300 miles an hour. <laughs> That's a pretty fast car. But this is, this is a gimmick that can't, can't go on the road. Yeah. But we are building a road car with that speed. Talk about It's it. all fun. It, it really is. And this is such a fun day. The cars across the lawn here, each one represents a significant impact on automotive design since the yes. beginning of time. The most astonishing thing is that coach building, there are some coach built machines here. They are so much better than the modern ones. So we have to try to mix both and to come back to coach building qualities in our cars. And we will do it. We will do it. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you very okay, much. Thank indeed. you, Luigi. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Don Williams, one of my best buddies in the whole car hobby, and uh, probably you probably owned as many cars as anybody there is. In 40 years, I think, I've been out of something. Years, and then now, Shanghai. I mean, you've always been in the international market and working with guys all over the world and finding cars, whatever, but you've been involved in this new museum in Shanghai. I want everybody to hear about it. I brought 60 cars to Shanghai, for, and we have a floor called the He Black went over in the back corner of his collection and pulled out. <laughs> so I'm going to take, no, no. take 60 of those. And <laughs> well, what we did, we brought cars over the, uh, with identifiable names. The first yeah. grouping, the Buicks, Cadillacs, yeah. uh, Citroen. We brought the first English car production car, first American production car, first French production car, first Italian production car, just like that, so we could help educate. Let's talk about that for a minute, because this is a country that is not steeped in great history of the automobile, and yet right. they're so quickly grabbing onto it, not just for the new cars, but for, indeed, we're going to have a Meguiar's Award in right. China. Who would ever right. think it? And you've invited us to come and have it yep. at your museum. Oh, I love it. And I just say, how that's happening so fast, it's just amazing. The museum is phenomenal. Aesthetically, they did it right. It's all centered about the cars. It's got about 130,000 square feet. There's a 250,000 square foot convention center right next door, so we can have a great international car show next year there. Wow. And so, no, I mean, the future is fantastic. And to see that's the right. different cars they like, their taste isn't any different. I mean, beautiful is beautiful. 
Well, Shanghai is a long ways away. A lot of us can't get there, but a lot of us can get to Danville, California, the Blackhawk. And of course, I don't know any museum in the world that so perfectly displays the cars. Automobiles to me are jewelry, yeah. especially yeah. The, the beautiful sculptured cars. Yeah. I'm more into the art and the concept of the car than I am the mechanics. Always have been. Right, right. And um, there's me just too, for some reason. one <laughs> moment in time, a, a group of people come together and create a masterpiece. Yeah. And that's something that you, very few places you can show that. Tell us yeah. about these cars you have on display here today. Okay, behind me we've got uh, the 53, 54, and 55 Alphabets. And basically, by a lot of people in the world, not just me, it's considered the greatest automotive design exercise in history. Because it was just remodeling of the car each year, introduced by Alpha and Bertoni at the Turn Auto Show, one each year. The folks at Art Center are really excited about you having me. Well, I'm excited to bring them too. Thanks, yeah. thanks for being here. Don, always the My best. Pleasure, you are the best. Thank Take you. Care. You can almost call it the biggest little car show in the world. It is a small boutique show, but what a powerful show. Every car in the field so significant. Of course, it is the Art Center College of Design, where most of the car designers come from. You heard me say it throughout the show, but this is hallowed ground. And to have a Concord here is so very, very special. I love this show. Hope you'll catch it next year where they have their 60th anniversary. Get that? Fabulous location, fabulous school. Support it with your dollars. We need to support these guys, okay? No extra plug for it. Hey, see you next time. So many great events here today. My voice is going, can you tell? I'm having too much fun. Uh, they're having an IndyCar uh, Roadster celebration lap today, so we're getting some of the, the great car guys that have uh, these wonderful old Roadsters and giving them their glory again. Bob Serra is one of those. And Ron Fournier, Fournier. Fournier is I'm your right-hand right man right for building these cars. You've done three cars together? Yes, I now? have. Yes, we have. Give us the history on this. Well, I bought this from a guy named Greg Peak, who had owned it for 10 years and dreamed about restoring it just wasn't going to happen in his financial, so he decided he had to sell it. He wouldn't let me buy it unless I agreed to restore it this way. After we got delivery in January, Ron Fournier started doing all the body work and made a gas tank, a radiator, a seat, and a fuel tank. And I ended up going over to Jack Roush, Roush Industries. We took, and from photographs, re-engineered in CAD CAM drawings all the front suspension, which yeah. Smokey Eunuch had cut off in 59 and thrown away. Oh my. So in six weeks, Jack Roush's people remade me a demonstration set and the actual car of the whole Dubonnet trailing arm front suspension that Frank Curtis had done, and we did it from drawings. And we thrashed for 14 hour days for two oh, weeks no. to get this finished. Well, you couldn't miss this day. Absolutely. Wouldn't miss it for the world. We uh, competed against this car. Oh, uh, yes, back to those sides. With the McGuire special, yeah, well, okay. yes. Brock Yates has it now. Yeah, he just yes, restored yes, it. Yes, yes. <laughs> a lot of my heart here because I've oh. been around these cars all my life. So yes. it's great fun to have you here today. And I know you're really into it. Oh, I love race cars. <laughs> uh, I think it's it makes life worth living. Think so? Hey, I'm a car guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Crazy great, car guy. great fun to get it out there on the track today. Absolutely. Hey, have a great time. Thank Ron, you. great restoration, man. Thank you very much. Okay, you bet. It's time to find out how car crazy you are. One of the best-selling cars of all time is the Volkswagen Beetle. Who was it that created its original design? Was it A, Adolf Hitler, B, Bertold Passat, C, Ferdinand Porsche, or D, Werner von Schulenberg? We'll find out if you've got the bug right after this break, right here on McGuire's Car Crazy. It's time to find out how car crazy you are. One of the best-selling cars of all time is the Volkswagen Beetle. Who was it that created its original design? Was it A, Adolf Hitler, B, Bertold Passat, C, Ferdinand Porsche, or D, Werner von Schulenberg. The Volkswagen, or people's car, was to be a car that all of his countrymen could afford. Indeed, it was an idea that Adolf Hitler commissioned C, Ferdinand Porsche, to create. This was the perfect opportunity for Ferdinand Porsche to develop his idea for a smaller, lighter car. Under the auspices of the automotive consulting firm that he founded in 1931, Porsche built the first 
prototype of the bug in 1932. It was not until 1948 that the 356, the first production car to bear the Porsche name, was available for sale. And if you knew this bit of Beetle trivia, you must be car crazy. And now our host, Barry McGuire. If you watched our show very much, you know how much I enjoy reading your car crazy confessions. This one comes from Will Huggins in Rome City, Indiana. And he writes, I have to confess, I've been suppressing my car craziness for a long time. Back in the early 70s, my dad bought a 54 Chevy truck at a farm auction for $200. In the latter 70s, when I was in high school, we had it painted black. My mom and great-grandma covered the stock seat and door panels in red crushed velvet and put red shag carpet inside. These were the 70s. With a set of chrome wheels, I drove it in school. In 81, I was hit by a big jacked up 4x4 and the truck has sat in a barn ever since. Now, after years of putting off the restoration, accumulating parts, small block 327, IFS, 12 bolt rear, four link IRS, and so on, I finally got the bug to start the rebuild. I attend the local car shows and I'm fortunate to live near Auburn, Indiana and go to the Auburn car sale every couple of years. I've been watching your show every chance I get and now with all these ideas and being tired of looking at everybody else's ride, it's time to drive my own hot rod. I just wanted to say thanks for keeping the embers burning and prodding guys like me back into the hot rod life. I'm hoping to have the truck finished by next spring and put it in next year's Muddy River Run car show in Fort Wayne, Indiana. If you're looking for new places to shoot your show, come out to Indiana. Maybe I'll get a chance to meet you and thank you in person. Will Huggins. Well, thank you, Will, for genuinely, and I mean genuinely, warming my heart with your letter. You may or may not know it, but my primary motivation for creating this television show over 10 years ago was to grow the car hobby. So when you say that we help keep the embers burning and prodding guys like you back into the hot rod life, I mean, it's like the nicest thing you could possibly say to me. I mean, it makes all of our weekends away from home to shoot this show worthwhile. And I trust that the ideas that you picked up from our car crazy friends for restoring your vintage truck will be a touch different from having a crushed velvet interior and shag rug. I don't think that would go over too good at the Muddy River Run. And you know what? I just might drop by to personally check you out myself. So let me say welcome back to the car hobby and thanks for making all of us just a little more car crazy. Hey, check this out. The SEMA Show, the largest and most prestigious automotive aftermarket trade show in the world, is now open to CarCrazyCentral.com visitors. Car Crazy Central's bringing you all the excitement and breaking news each day with our four teams of cameras and journalists' coverage. Plus, Barry McGuire will be on stage interviewing top celebrities for both CarCrazyCentral.com and SEMA Television. To catch all the action, check out the SEMA Insider on CarCrazyCentral.com.